everybody. Welcome to another episode of Movies with Malice. This week, I am going to bring you two of my favorite movies kind of ever. And these are two movies that I like to watch kind of right before my like sobriety date. You know, uh, I got sober 2201. And um, the reason why I like to watch these two movies is because they remind me of where I was before I got sober. And um, <laughs> it's really fucked up when you really think about it that these are my choices. It's street trash, so fucked up, and Decline of Western Civilization 3. I'm going to start talking about this one, but like this one, I even knew some of the people in this movie. Um, street trash. <laughs> I can't, um, like, I feel almost bad that I relate to this movie because it's so fucked up. It's so disgusting. It is, um, you know, supposed to be like kind of horror comedy. This guy who runs a liquor store finds a bunch of bottles of the Viper. <laughs> I've got the Viper. He's got the Viper in his liquor store and um, he doesn't even know where these come from. These were like, like in some secret panel behind all the other liquor and it was all like leaking and corroding and it's like some fucking poisonous alcohol and he's like I'll sell this to these fucking bums that keep robbing me oh sorry about my swearing <laughs> I'll sell these to these bums and um cause he, there's these it's like New York in the 80s maybe the late 70s I can't remember does it say when this came out 86 like some people look really 70s in this movie though um, anyway, like, it's just, first of all, the cinematography in this movie is amazing. Um, I know nerds out there are going to know the name of the guy who did that directing in this. I'm not here to be your, uh, Wikipedia on names. You guys going to have to figure that shit out yourself. I'm here about the story and, um, how I relate to it. So, um, I just think it was filmed so beautifully when its subject is so disgusting, you know, like just the juxtaposition of that, where it's like every bum in this movie was such a complete character that honestly in my life I've met, you know, they all are like these people that I've known. And it's when I rewatch this movie now, like I feel so kind of far away from it, but yet still near because just living here in Hollywood, all the bums that are around my building, I see them every day. It's like some of them, I feel like I know them. I don't really like hang out with the bums like I used to because I don't live with the bums like I used to, but you kind of get a sense of their characters, you know? Um, back in the day, there's always that Vietnam vet one. He's like the star of this movie. There's like this vet and he has like flashbacks all the time. And um, he is you know, the, what do you call it? Um, I don't know. He, he's just one of the characters they keep going back on in this movie. Um, but let me go back to the beginning cause I'm already getting lost in the characters. Um, so the liquor store salesman, he's just letting people buy these for a dollar. And when you drink the Viper, it causes your body to instantly melt. And that's the other thing, the special effects in this movie, when people's bodies melt in this movie, it's not just like blood and guts and gore. It's like colorful splatter gore. And then they like, it's like a little bit of like acid melting where they're just like, their legs separate from their feet and shit. And um, I just, I love that kind of gore. Um, upon rewatching this, I also forgot that this movie is a little bit rapey in a lot of parts. And, um, you know, I remember when I first watched this movie years ago, years and years ago, like I watched it probably when it first came out, like on, you know, TBS or TNT, whenever, whatever movie channel showed all these, um, gore horror movies. Um, but I was like really, really young and I didn't even really like kind of pay attention to a lot of those parts. 
and then probably years later when I watched it it still was just like kind of another time and I was talking to a friend about that earlier about how it's like um you know for me I really like movies like this because I think that you know like you need to include those parts in the movie about this kind of a lifestyle and other movies whatever movie whatever story you're telling if that's the truth tell it because it's the truth and that's how people lived and even though it bothers people and it's fucked up and it's horrible it was what was happening back then and um I don't think that that's like a mean storyline in this movie but I just want to put it out there because it's so triggering for so many people they might not be able to watch this movie or be able to handle it in, in the kind of culture that we live in now um but I think that people are you know kind of missing out when they limit themselves because this is the story of this time and um I also believe I am a believer that when people include like the bad the really bad stuff that happened in life um back then like whether it be racist or homophobic or rapey or any of the things that are triggering um it helps you know where people were at that time but also if you (laughs) are going out into the world and you're young it helps you also understand that not everyone out there is good that there's some evil out there and then you can protect yourself because if they start to censor everything and like protect everyone from all the bad shit that you know these artists and movies are trying to create um then you know anyone who's growing up and watching movies now and they censor all this stuff they'll never know that there's real evil out there and when they go in the real world what they're gonna find out and I'm glad that when I was young I was able to see shit like this so I knew when the time came for me to become homeless which wasn't something I planned um I was pretty I was pretty prepared and um anyways I didn't mean this to turn into a censorship (laughs) blog or vlog but um it has to be said you know because I didn't me re-watching this in the culture that I live in now I do have a different mindset about it than I did when I first saw it so I wanted to make sure that people understood that this is um this is not glorifying anything <laughs> for sure uh, everything that happens in this movie is fucked up uh, the bums in this movie are horrible um they every time a bum buys a bottle of this another bum steals it from them um there's just like no trust no love everything's bad um but this is the kind of movie that I like to watch (laughs) to remind myself of how fucked up my life could be because I've lived in this world before and I know how fucked up it was a lot of this horrible shit didn't happen to me um some of it did but not all of it and um So I always like to watch movies like this to feel better about my life, which is a real low bar y'all. But, uh, this is, this is where I'm at right now. And, um, this, if you want to know where I got this, I also bought a DVD copy of this and cause it was, uh, remade on DVD and the DVD came with a label sticker. And so I just stuck it on a bottle of mouthwash that I mixed with cough syrup. And I hope nobody ever drinks this cause it's probably so disgusting. Let me smell I seriously almost puked it's real oh oh okay yeah (laughs) if you come over I might offer you a drink just saying um okay now I'm gonna talk about decline of western civilization three okay everybody let's talk about this a lot of people hate this movie and that bums me out because most of the people that hate this movie never watched it right they only watched decline of western civilization one and that was that was of course the best one because this that one was about like og real punk rock and i'm going to talk about that and decline of western civilization (laughs) so hard for me decline of western civilization two separately probably both of those even separately because those need their whole they need a whole day but um those two movies 
three movies, all of these are Penelope Spears movies, um, the, and Suburbia, that also needs to get talked about. Those movies all, um, the first two, talk more about the bands and the music. This one talks more about the fans of this kind of punk rock and this generation of punk rock, which is the one that I relate to the most because that was the one I lived through. Um, in the 80s, when that first generation of punk rock was coming out, I wasn't old enough to go to shows, but I was already listening to it. Um, I just couldn't get to the shows. And then sa same thing with the hair metal one, The Decline 2. Those, I mean, I was just about old enough. I was old enough then, but I just wasn't going to shows because I lived on an Indian reservation back then, which I've talked about before. And um, I, nobody came, no bands came out there, especially not big bands like that. Um, I th yeah, so I missed a lot of the cool 80s hair metal back in the day. Anyway, so by the time I was out and going to shows, the kind of music that they're sh showing in this decline, this is the kind of bands that I was going to see. They have like Naked Aggression and like, um, I'm not even going to list all the bands because I once we start going down names, I'm going to forget one and then feel bad. But um, I liked all the that kind of punk that was like political and like kind of peace punk stuff. That was the kind of shit I was into. And it also was like, I mean, that was the kind of shit that all the squatter punks listened to. And I actually knew some of the kids in this movie and some of them I still see like troll me and troll. were actually just in a movie together. That's going to be coming out soon. And, um, that's called the brides of Satan. And I'll let you guys know when that comes out on DVD. <laughs> I mean, on at, in the theaters, it's going to go to theater. I'm sure. Um, anyway, uh, and it, it, there's a couple other friends of mine in this movie and I love how, so she, she interviews a lot of the kids in this movie and they all talk about, you know, they came from broken homes. A lot of the, you know, stories that I told when I was talking about my heroin documentary, it's like a lot of the same kind of characters, you know, um, same kind of lifestyle, same kind of background. And, um, one of the boys in this documentary that was was interviewed was talking about how um he can travel around the united states probably even back then you could go to europe even and it's like the squatter punks back then from this generation they were kind of all homies and they kind of all knew each other if you were to talk to troll from this movie i'm sure he would tell you because he traveled a lot more than a lot of other people that um you were able to like kind of get accepted every city you'd go to and they would just take you to their squat or take you to wherever they were staying and you could kind of like, you know, everyone knew each other. Like some of the kids that I was squatting with in San Francisco, I could still talk to them today and they all know these kids and they know other kids that all did that. It was like a, a circuit or something back in the day. I squatted more than I slept outside because I don't know if you could really get away with it as much nowadays as you could back then. But um, let me paint a picture for you. San Francisco in the 90s was like, when I moved there, like mid 90s, it was just after they had a bunch of earthquakes. So Market Street is where all the punks that I knew stayed. And at that time, a lot of the buildings around there had been earthquake affected. And so they were like boarded off and closed down. Um, and I mean, huge buildings, like what used to be offices. There was one that we squatted in called Sixth and Howard. Sixth and Howard, the downstairs portion of it, excuse me, downstairs portion of it was um, let's say it was like a whole block of a building that was all stores before and so uh, Up above it was apartments. So it was like shops and apartments So just imagine like Santee Alley in LA now where th there's all those shops and then apartments under it. it was like a whole building like that condemned and when I moved there that building had already been squatted for probably 10 years so um, people actually stopped sleeping upstairs in the hotel part which seemed like it would have been more hospitable and this is disgusting you guys but the upstairs portion of this building um every single room in that upstairs portion had the bathrooms were full of feces so nobody was up there anymore which was also something that haunted me when i slept because i slept in the downstairs part which used to be you know um some shops and stuff because i was like if there's ever an earthquake i'll be buried in shit doesn't matter you're gonna die anyway but also gross death 
Um, but I thought about that a lot. <laughs> Too much, really. And um, so we stayed downstairs. And um, the way that... First, just let me explain. To get into this building, I had to, like, shimmy up like a rat up this old... Um, it was like the spigots where the firemen get the water from. So it was almost like a hydrant, but it was like on the side of a building and it has like two little things, but you just shimmy up it like a chimney. And um, then we'd shimmy up that, get in through a little window, slide down a steel support beam. And then you have to like hop over a bunch of like fallen down pieces of concrete that used to be walls to get to this like part of a building. And um, we slept in there. We had hijacked some electricity from some building like one one squatter kid I knew he hopped on another building grabbed their electrical wires hopped it over to ours spliced it into ours which you could do back then you could probably do it now too but I think you'd probably get caught if you did that now um so we had a refrigerator we had a stereo we were partying up in this building um you know it was I mean it was pretty cool for young punks to like live like that you know and um as opposed to like sleeping outside where you could get harassed and you know bad shit could happen and the cops could get you not to say that the cops never got to us inside the buildings because that happens sometimes there's been times in my life where I woke up getting kicked in the head by cops literally um because we're covered in our whole sleeping bags you know like sleeping like that they don't know if we're a kid or a boy or a girl and the cops just come in there it's like San Francisco in the 90s they just start kicking people and they're like get the fuck out of here blah 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 they don't know they don't care and, um, I mean, they, I, I'm sure they didn't really enjoy having to, like, go in this shit-filled building, um, probably full of also, like, lice and bed bugs and stuff like that, which I managed to never really get, um, I bleached my hair a lot back then, uh, but yeah, we considered ourselves to kind of be above, like, sleeping outside, even though I did it sometimes, um, if I was like fighting with someone who was inside, but we also considered ourselves above, which I talked about in my documentary, uh, above people that would stay in a shelter because we didn't like being told what to do. If you stay in a shelter, people tell you, you can't party here. You can't do this. And you know, like we wanted to party and, um, you know, like back then it really seemed like I've said before, like the world was going to be ending. We didn't care. We were going to party like it's 1999. And, um, there's a lot, honestly, that I did love about squatting, like not paying rent. I still miss that. Oh, how I miss not paying rent. Anyway, um, that's one of the, the best parts about it. And then, um, just kind of feeling like you're getting away with something. And also like, have you, if you've ever played like the video game Silent Hill and you like, <laughs> This is such a weird analogy, but it's true. Um, and then, like, in, I can't remember if it's Silent Hill 2 or 3. It was, like, whichever came out in the early 2000s I was playing. Um, anyways, where it's, like, you're going into all these different rooms, and then you open a door, and there's, like, weird shit going on. That's kind of what was some of the squats that I stayed in were like, because I did some other squats. I lived in that one I was describing for the longest time, but sometimes I'd stay in other places, and there'd be, like, people I didn't know in some rooms doing some weird shit. And, like... I kind of liked the creepiness. It's fucked up, but I, I like being scared, and um, I am so lucky. <laughs> I'm so lucky. I lived through so many uh, things that could have been really bad. Um, I think squatting never really caused me any harm. Um, hitchhiking was probably more dangerous, and I did that a lot more, but. Um, I wouldn't want to do squatting now and I'm pretty sure that now if you were to get arrested for squatting you'd probably really do time I think back then if they just kicked you out um, and it just there's just so many people doing it that they just which doesn't make sense to me because if you really think about the homeless problem that we have um, why would you not want them to squat if it's like an abandoned building that you're gonna like tear down eventually anyways who cares you know, it's better, wouldn't it be better than them, like, sleeping outside and covering the sidewalk and the streets and making it unsafe for children? Put them all in a building. Maybe even fix it up a little. That would solve a lot of problems, if you ask me. 
squatter punks back in the day might have thought that they were different than regular homeless home bums, but like really not so much, you know, like I liked to think I was better or different, but I mean, many times I slept in a bush as well or passed out on the street or slept under a car. Um, you know, like I'm not sure a lot of my friends that were squatters did like you can't, you also couldn't always get a squat. Um, a lot of times that's just not an option in Seattle and Seattle's freezing. I squatted in, or I was homeless in Seattle and only one time in the multiple years I stayed in Seattle, did I ever get to sleep inside. Um, same with Portland and didn't really get to sleep inside when I was like traveling or living on my backpack. Um, Sometimes I would, you know, like sleep in a dumpster because a recycling dumpster is actually pretty warm. I've done that before. Um, in Austin, Texas, I stayed in, I was able to hustle hotels pretty well because um, they're very cheap there, like $60 a night. I could get um, even spare changing and I would usually do it with a few other people, you know, like so we'd split that cost. Um, we were able to do that and... uh you know, like, I think for some people, maybe being homeless would be a choice just because it's better than where they, that, that is one thing. One of the boys in this movie said it was better than his family life where he was being abused. Um, for me, I didn't see being homeless as a choice because I was like forced on the streets from foster care. But I think over time it became a choice because I didn't need to be out on the streets for that long. And um, I just, uh, I think it's, you know, uh, oh, it's just sad that this one's so overlooked because, I mean, right, it's not so much about the bands, but um, it's funny how, like, culturally, like, a lot of people try to look like this now. Like I was at the Dolls Kill store the other day and they have a bunch of like patched out pants and patched up skirts and like all this kind of like crusty punk looking shit. And um, people think the look is cool, but like they don't understand like what it came from. It came from, you know, a whole lifestyle. And, you know, like to understand some of this is like, you know, the kids that were squatting back then, they had a pride about not wanting to like ever sell out by, you know, like getting a legit job or, um, you know, like being a part of the, like, we'll go back to talking about the matrix. They didn't want to be in the matrix. You know, it's like for some people, like you end up homeless for some reasons that are like against your, you know, like it's not the, your choice at first, but then sometimes it still is your choice because, you don't want to live a regular life. Like I'm still kind of like this, you guys, like where I, I don't really like the idea of working like a day job ever. This is something I refuse to adapt to. And I don't think I ever, I'm, I, I don't like to be hypocritical. So I won't say I'll never do something because I don't know what the future holds for me. And it's like maybe something appealing in a day job way would come up for me. But um, and there, I'm not judging people who do it. I'm just saying for me, for my soul, waking up to an alarm clock is uh, just unacceptable. I can't do it. I can't do it. All these years of being sober and I'm still like, I'm not waking up to a freaking alarm. Um, there's, this, there's a part of my you know, old school self that just, I'm not adaptable to living in like, I don't know, like living in society the way that society like kind of di dictates people to live. Like I try to make my way through without really following the rules, kind of still doing it my way. And, um, it's definitely the hard way. Um, but we each do what we're comfortable with, don't we? Um, anyway, I just really think that people should kind of just watch this movie and just see the way that, um, 
you know, these kids were able to make, and just like me, we were all able to make our own family, you know, like we might have come from broken homes and we might have had like, you know, like shitty lives and stuff like that. But, you know, just like I think you can now with the friends that you make now, you can choose your own family with the people that you surround yourself with, you know, so make sure you're surrounding yourself with people that love you. <laughs> Cause, um, I mean, that's what I did. I don't, I mean, I don't think the people that, you know, the punks that I surround myself with really loved me, but they definitely weren't trying to fuck me over. And I think that's really important. Um, especially nowadays, cause people are always trying to do something nowadays, but, um, I feel like people really need to give this movie a better chance and street trash for whatever reason, um, people have overlooked. I know there's some bad, ugly images in this movie, but there's, there's some beautiful parts too. And the filming is just amazing. And the, uh, body melting is amazing. There's a whole genre of movies in this like body melt like genre. I even have a movie called Body Melt that I'm going to talk about on another day. It's an Australian movie that's amazing and it's going to probably go with the stuff or maybe um, Terror Vision or one of, you know, like some of these, there's a bunch of melty movies that I'm going to talk about soon because I really, I know a lot of people have been waiting for me to get to some more of my cult movies. You just hang in there. I'm going to bring up a bunch more soon. I've got, you know, more here. I've got four or five more walls over there. Um, and I'm going to have more horror films coming up in the summertime. And so everyone that's been watching my channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I've got so much more to show you. So much more to talk about. I've got guests that will be coming soon. Um, I've really been being patient with my guests because I want to make sure I get people who will show up <laughs> and, um, yeah, if you like my choices this week, thank you. If you don't watch next week and I might have your choices that week because I'm going to have different ones all the time and you never know. And please like, and subscribe and come back for more. Thank you.